time on Dual Destinies. Let's get moody! In case you missed anything, let's fill you in on this case. Mr. Plume has it out for poor Orla, but after a counseling session, we figured out the truth. The blood she saw belonged to Orla, not the victim. To find the true moment of the murder, we took a look back through the security footage. Is that it? But Mr. Wright managed to turn it all around. Orla and even Mr. Plume were both manipulated by the true culprit. Will we be able to identify the mastermind behind this case? Find out on Dual Destinies, next! I, Norma de Plume, was set up? I, Norma de Plume, writer extraordinaire, was used? N no. No! <laughs> Mr. Plume, please do something about your attire. Uh, I... That was one wardrobe malfunction I did not want to see. It would appear we need to shift our suspicion towards someone other than Orla. Prosecutor Blackwell, please have the bloodstained coin analyzed. Hmm. You waste your breath. I guess even Prosecutor Blackwell can't refute the possibility of a human suspect. You did it, boss! If the crime happened beside the pool, there's no way an orca could have done it! Yeah, if only we could find the bag the coins are in. Hmm. In light of the new discovery, it would appear that the orca couldn't have done it. Bingo, Your Honor. If the blood on the coin proves to be that of the victim, we can unequivocally overturn Orla's accusation. Objection! Overturn the defendant's accusation? Hmm. I think not. Ah! My hair! My beautiful hair! Yesterday, a new inmate was brought into the prison. He said, The moment you relax is when you're most vulnerable. Hmm. And what did this man go in for? He is merely a sneaky thief who enjoys a spot of fishing now and again. But right down on here would be easier to hook than any fish. Duh! Uh. Why does that bird have a scarf? I don't get it. It's not cold. What's this? That coin from before and some sort of bag? Uh, b bag I don't think I'm gonna like this. This is the coin bag the 300 coins were in. I believe you were looking for this. How did you get that? I never said we didn't find it at the crime scene. The bag had blood on it, so naturally, I had it sent to the crime lab. And, does the blood belong to the victim? It does indeed, as does the blood on the coin. I knew it! So the blood on the coin did belong to the victim! The bag was open and the coins had all spilled out. But the bag alone wasn't proof enough to say that it was used as a murder weapon. However... Thanks to the defense and their coin, I am more than satisfied that it was. Prosecutor Blackwell, are you conceding that the true culprit committed the murder with a bag of coins? I shall concede that the victim was put into the pool after his death. However, even with the bag, it doesn't change the fact that it was the orca that killed the victim. What? How can you still suspect Orla? You said that the true culprit manipulated Orla's behavior. But Orla isn't the kind of orca that would let someone control her. If anything, Orla used the victim's behavior against him to murder him. What? But... but... Are you arguing that the orca manipulated a human being? Hmm. <laughs> 
To prove it, I have summoned another witness. Marlon Rhymes, take the stand! But Marlon Rhymes is a witness! He better not solicit his mixtapes in here, I swear to God. Well, don't just stand there. State your name. Uh, I told you I didn't want to be a witness. I thought one witness would be quite enough to prove the defendant's guilt. But apparently, Right Dono won't be satisfied until every stone is turned. Well, son of a motherfucker! All right, fine. If I gotta talk, then let's just get this over with. Mr. Rhymes doesn't seem like a willing witness. I wonder what Prosecutor Blackwell is going to have him testify about. Uh, so could we have your name and occupation for the record, witness? Well, if you say so, but we're doing it my way. Ahoy, yo, 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 ho, ho! People of the law time to testify! Chilling with my crew at the ship shape. Orcas, penguins, and the seascape. Cleaning and feeding, there ain't no end. With those bratty kids' toys, I shall transcend. New animal keeper from the house of rhymes. I'm the master keeper, mauling with the rhymes. Oh my, I'm afraid I couldn't understand a word you said. Seemed pretty clear to me. Is that that flip flop music young people nowadays like? So close, Your Honor. So close, and yet so far. Please proceed with your testimony, witness. Without the flip-flop. No open-toed shoes in the courtroom, please. Okay, fine. But I don't want to do this, I tell you. I feel like I'm selling Sasha out. Let's see. At about 10.10 a.m., I was in the staff room. I heard a loud noise from the pool room. So I went to the door to look in. I couldn't see the captain or the orca, but I saw a bunch of coins scattered around. The orca knows there's a certain spot people stand to play volleyball with her. I think maybe, just maybe, she knocked down the stuff that was piled up there and hit the captain. Hmm. So that gives us a little more info about the area around the orca pool. I better update this. The defendant made the stuff fall down. Overturned creatures and assorted plums were scattered all over the pool room floor. There is no doubt that it was the orca that caused the mess. But could she really have done that from within the pool? Hmm. As I said, the orca is the only one that could have performed such a feat. The pool and its room were tidied the night before, including its various odds and ends. But when our rhyming Marlin checked on the scene, over 400 pounds of props had fallen. To move it all in one go would challenge even the brawny prisoner in the cell next to mine. What is he, the jail gossip? So, how did 400 pounds of items fall on once? I'll tell you how. The orca pulled on the cloth that was underneath them. A weight that would have been all but impossible for a human to move was child's play to an orca. During a friendly game of volleyball, the defendant made the cranes fall, and the bag of coins that was among the items fell on the victim's head and killed him. The orca then toyed with the victim's body underwater, which is what Mr. Plume saw. Objection! But the witness only said he heard a loud noise. That doesn't automatically make it the sound of Orla making the items fall. Also, why did you only look in on the pool room anyway, Mr. Rhymes? That orca sometimes makes a loud noise to summon her trainer. But I'm still a newbie, so I don't have a security card to get into the pool room yet. So even if she tries to summon somebody, there isn't much I could do about it. I see. So the witness couldn't enter the crime scene. Objection! If Mr. Rhymes couldn't enter the room, there's at least one thing he can't be sure about. 
His statement about the orca playing volleyball is purely speculation! Silence! You shut up! Whether the orca was actually playing volleyball or not is not the issue. Traces of the orca's saliva were found on the cloth that was underneath the crates. The important point is that the orca is the only one who could have moved the items. I have to discredit that statement somehow! If I don't, it'd mean that Orla was the culprit, even if the victim died beside the pool. Orla is counting on me. Good luck, boss. Thanks, Athena. Need to save my game first. I don't understand why you have to... You can never be too careful uh, when you're cross-examining. Whatever you say, boss. Knock down the stuff that was piled up there and hit the captain. I think I have something for this. Actually, I don't think I have anything. HOLD IT! Are you saying you think she knocked down the items on purpose? I don't want to believe it myself, but... That orca's pretty smart. It'd be easy for her to pull the cloth the stuff was on while she was playing volleyball. Orcas are really strong. One good pull, and all those things will come crashing down faster than Little Wayne's career. Guess maybe an orca could be strong enough to make all that stuff fall. I have never seen an orca play tug of war myself. But the fact is, this one did. The traces of the orca's saliva found on the cloth prove it. How long do you plan to walk type rope on those shaky theories of yours? Wait until you see me do acrobatics! Moments like these are what I became a lawyer again for. I don't know why, but Mr. Rhymes is lying. I'm afraid I have to expose that secret he and Pearls were keeping to resolve this. And I think that first statement in his testimony lines up with that contradiction. All I have to do is find that calendar. And it's not here. Athena, do you have the calendar? No. Why would I have the calendar? I, I don't think you- Boss, you're the one who keeps all the evidence. Check your pockets. I don't even have pockets. Well, uh, fine, I'll check my pockets. Oh, it's here. Alright, cool. Objection! You say you were in the staff room, but is that really true? Of course it's true! Why would I lie about a thing like that? Mr. Rhymes, have you ever seen this calendar before? Hey! That's... I see you recognize it. Yeah, that's the rifle calendar! It's a big hit at the Shipshape Aquarium gift shop! Uh, thank you for shopping at the ship shape! <laughs> Mr. Rhymes, please refrain from scattering fish around the witness stand. G sorry! Not to worry, your bonus. Tucker will have them cleaned up in no time. What the heck? What, what? I guess that bird comes hey, in handy now and then. Those are my fingers! The fish are on All the right, ball. Mr. Hey, Wright. We've all Get seen your out. cute souvenir. Now, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, no, Your Honor. This isn't my calendar. It was originally the witnesses, but it came into the possession of a certain young lady. W what Mr. Rhymes and this young lady first met each other in the food prep room. After a mishap, their calendars got switched around. They ran into each other at around 10.10 a.m. in the food prep room. So clearly, Mr. Rhymes was not in the staff room. In other words, there's no way he could have heard the noise in the pool room upstairs! Ah! What's this? This is the first I'm hearing about any calendar. That's because Mr. Rhymes and Pearls were keeping it a secret. You lied to me? This transgression will not go unpunished. Ah! So, Mr. Rhymes... You didn't hear the noise of the equipment falling after all, did you? Mm, okay. I admit it. I didn't hear the noise in the orca pool room myself. But somebody told me about it. Who told you about it? It was, uh... Unless you tell the truth, Mr. Rhymes, I can't save Orla. 
and I'm sure you know how sad that would make Miss Buckler. Um... I heard about it... from Sasha. <laughs> what? From Miss Buckler?! But that doesn't make sense! What is going on here? Hmm. Now it's the trainer's own words that drive the ogre in a corner. How do you like being bitten by your own client? Yeah. Right, no, no. I certainly didn't see this coming. What perfect timing. There was something I wanted to ask Miss Buckler about the ogre. The prosecution calls the trainer, Miss Sasha Buckler, to the stand. Yes, I suppose it would be a good idea to hear what the orca's trainer has to say. I don't know what Sasha's going to say, but I'll just have to meet it head on, whatever it is. We will take a 20 minute recess while the witness is summoned. Mr. Wright, are you going to cross-examine Sasha? I guess I'll have to ask her about the noise from the stuff falling down. Mr. Wright. Mr. Rhymes, why did you lie? I, I didn't want Sasha to have to appear in court. I thought if anybody had to testify, I should be the one to do it for her. But why would you go to all those lengths? Did you see the entry for the 20th on that calendar? The note about meeting the captain at the Yorker pool. Yeah, I found that calendar in the nap room. I think it's probably Sasha's. What? Then that means... That means I have to update the court record. Again. I didn't want suspicion to fall on Sasha. Mr. Wright, I gotta go back to the aquarium and look after the orca in Sasha's place. I'll be rooting for you on the other end of that TV phone. Please take care of Sasha. Okay, we can't let Prosecutor Blackwell get the best of us. Time to refocus. You're right. After all, we're the only ones who can save Orla. We're gonna make them pay. The court will now reconvene. Prosecutor Blackwell, please call the witness to the stand. Again, you waste your breath. Me name be Sasha, and I be one of Captain Norla's swashbucklers! I come to rescue me bucko from the false charges put on her by Dread Pirate Nostash! Nostash? I guess Nostash refers to Prosecutor Blackville this time. Well, it can't be the judge. He has a mustache. And a full beard! You're damn right. Uh-huh. Now then, Captain Judge, shall we begin the pirate court? Captain Judge? Hmm, I rather like that. It makes me feel like a salty old sea dog. Captain Beard. Bring out the salty old sea dog in you. Part of this balanced breakfast. And scene. How is that for a self-intro? This court is not a show. State your full name and occupation. I'm Sasha Buckler. I work at Shipshape Aquarium. I perform in our Swashbuckler Spectacular Pirate Show alongside Orla as her trainer. Wow, you seem like a completely different person now. You really think so? Thanks, I was in my Pirate Show persona just then. Prosecutor Blackwell said I could introduce myself any way I like. I bet money he didn't think you were going to do it like that. And what will this witness testify about? The orca manipulated the victim into playing volleyball and then knocked the items down. 
The witness will report about hearing the noise that caused the victim's death. Now just wait a minute. Sure, Orla uses the ball to break props sometimes. She even spiked the ball at the giant octopus's leg yesterday when I was cleaning. So Orla was the one who broke that leg, huh? But she couldn't have knocked down that huge stack of equipment with her little ball! Hmm... I thought you were paying attention to the trial over the telecast. But you apparently know nothing of what we've been discussing. The Yorga knocked down the equipment by pulling the cloth that was underneath it. No one said anything about the Yorga knocking it down with a ball. What? Is that what we were talking about? I came in here to give Prosecutor Nostash a good kill hauling. But I'm the one getting the cat and nine tails! Ugh, he's as vicious as a tiger shark! Miss Buckler, just focus on your testimony and you'll be alright. Don't worry, we'll take care of that tiger shark for you. That's right, believe in yourself. Thank you, Athena. Okay, I can do this. My testimony will be phenomenal. Alright, Miss Buckler, please proceed with your testimony. I admit I heard Orla summoning me with a loud noise. But the aquarium guest's scream I heard over the walkie-talkie was more urgent. I talked to Norma de Plume first and then went to the pool room with the security guard. The equipment was everywhere, and the captain was lying in the middle of it all. Hmm. Her story doesn't seem much different from Marlon Rhymes' testimony. Or does it? The circumstances are different. The actual order of Orla's actions depend on the order the witness heard the two noises. If she had the scream first, the prosecution's claims don't stand up! Objection! Unfortunately for you, she doesn't remember the order of what she heard. Uh... She doesn't? I was distracted at the time, so I don't really recall which one I heard first. I was lost in thought until the guard brought me back to myself. Sorry I'm no help. As long as the order remains unclear, I shall not alter the prosecution's claims. After killing the victim with the bag of coins, the orca toyed with the body in the water. I have to turn things around here somehow. Unless I can prove the sound Sasha heard was not the sound of the victim's murder. Blackwell's claim that Orla pulled down that equipment to kill the victim will stand. If I want to save Orla, I have to find a contradiction, no matter how small. Very well. Your cross-examination, please, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I better not fuck this up. All right, Athena, any ideas? We don't have much left in the confidence meter. Let me guess, Mr. Wright. You're going to save your game. So I guess it's a good time to log our progress. Uh, I figured as much. Remember, Athena, you can never be too careful. Now, watch the master in progress. Hold it! You heard Mr. Plume scream. That's right. I heard her through the walkie-talkie of a guard making his rounds. Ah! I can still hear it in my head. It was so loud, I thought it was a sea lion. Mr. Plume sort of reminds me of a sea lion, actually. I know, right? Ooh, I should call her Sea Lion Lady and see how she likes it. I guess Athena's still upset about being called Yellow Girl. What did you do after hearing the visitor's scream? Went to the pool room with a security guard. What's the security guard doing there? HOLD IT! You and the security guard headed to the orca pool room. Yeah, apparently that obnoxious writer lady said she didn't trust me by myself. That's why, after talking to her, the guard and I went to the pool room together. 
Why be the wench so suspicious? Rawr! I demand a swordfish duel! That's what I felt like saying to her anyway. I'm afraid I don't get it. That was a line from the show when Orla and Sasha quarrel with each other. Didn't you do your swashbuckler spectacular homework, Your Honor? Why am I getting scolded here, Mr. Wright? And why am I getting scolded here, Your Honor? Because you're a terrible lawyer. Miss Buckler, please tell me what happened after you headed to the pool room. All right. When the garden I got there, we saw that... HOLD IT! What do you recall about the scene exactly? I don't remember much, to be honest. I was in total shock from seeing the captain like that. If you ask me something specific, I might be able to remember, though. Specific questions, huh? Okay, let me see. What should I ask her about? I know it could be hard for her, but it is important for me to ask her about Jack. Could you tell me more about the state you found the victim in? It's so hard to even think about right now. Sasha is deeply traumatized by the victim's death. I guess I shouldn't push her on it then. Poor Sasha. She must have really adored him. Do you think Orla really did make that stuff fall down? I think we probably need more information before we can know what really happened. Let's be careful not to let a single inconsistency slip by us. Remember, we can never be too careful. Alright, we're gonna go through this conversation one more time. HOLD IT! Alright, so... Could you tell me more about the things that were scattered around? They were equipment and props for the new show. The new show? Yeah, we were supposed to debut a brand new Swashbuckler Spectacular yesterday. We already defeated the giant octopus in No Stash, after all. We were going to have a new nemesis, Red Stash. He's on the flyer. Oh, that's the flyer Rival was distributing. Who will obtain the gold coins hidden in the school rock? Oh, I wish it could be me. Leave it to you, Athena, to know all about it. Orla's even got some new tricks for the new show. So all the stuff that fell down was for the new show, is that it? That's right. A bunch of props and crates and other equipment stacked up. Your Honor, for the record, I'd like that information added to the witness's testimony. Very well, Miss Buckler. Please append what you just said to your testimony. Sure thing. Haha, <laughs> I think we're in the clear now, Athena. See, we worked hard for this. Our careful strategy has earned us a new statement in this testimony. And going by experience, I think now's the perfect time for us to attack. You see, Athena, you can never be too careful. Now watch the master at work. Objection! This piece of it, uh, uh, shit. Great job, boss. Because of your careful strategy, we'll now be running away with Sasha's money, and you get to watch Orla die. I hope you're proud of yourself. I am so sorry. These props for the new show, what kind of things were they? A blow-up dolphin, an anchor, Red Sash's costume, the bag of coins, stuff like that. The captain was wearing his usual costume, and the new props were all there. Wait a minute. Something about that doesn't seem right. Is there a problem with Sasha's testimony? You say the captain was wearing his usual costume, but is that completely accurate? Phoenix, what are you nitpicking my testimony for? If we look at the body, we see that there's a discrepancy between that and your statement. You stated that the victim was wearing his usual costume. But you'll notice that the victim was wearing a red scarf around his neck. I imagine this red scarf is part of his costume for the new pirate show. Oh, you're right. It's written right here in the flyer for the new show. 
featuring the dashing red stash with a fluttering red scarf. Although, I have to say, it just looks like a red scarf was added to his old costume. Yeah, well, the captain was never one to spend much money on costumes. But, you know, the captain wasn't wearing that red scarf. But in this photo, I believe I'd see a red scarf. Yeah, but it's not wrapped around his neck. It's just draped on top of his neck. That red scarf was packed away with the rest of the new show's equipment. It must have fallen on top of the captain when the equipment fell down. Oh, I see. Project.